नमस्कार दिस इज असीम आर्यवर्त एंड आई एम गौरव वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट रशिया यूक्रेन इशू दैट इज गोइंग ऑन एंड द होल वर्ल्ड हैज देयर अटेंशन ऑन इट बिकॉज सम प्रेडिक्ट दैट इट कैन गो इन टू अ फुल फ्लेज वॉर एंड देयर विल बी सीवियर कॉन्सिक्वेंसेज एज वेरियस अदर कंट्रीज कैन गेट इन्वॉल्व इन दिस वॉर सो वी कैन सी दैट नैटो इज गेटिंग इन्वॉल्व हियर नैटो अंडर द लीडरशिप ऑफ अमेरिका and the russians are getting into this as well with belarus who is taking the sides of russia what are the reason behind it who are involved in it we will be looking at it and uh, we will also see that the how india stand here and what will be the impact on india in this whole situation we will see all that before going into all this i will requ- request you to subscribe like my channel and the video and also press the bell icon as well because whenever i will upload a new video you will get the notification as soon as possible so let's get into this so there will uh, i will summarize the history of the ukraine because ukraine was part of the soviet union before 1991 as uh, 1991 the soviet union got dissolved the ukraine became a free sovereign state but their relationship with russia was very mutual mutually respectful they had a good relationship because the leadership of ukraine was also of soviet era as well as the uh, russians so they had a very very mutual understanding and the result of that we can see there is this russian ukrainian friendship treaty that was signed in 1997 that meant that they their terms were they were on good terms and uh, in this uh, uh, treaty it was one clause was very important one article was important because here they have uh, agreed upon the boundary that existed between the russians and the ukrainians and there was no claim over each other's territory after that so it was a very uh, mutual mutually accepted border there but in 2018 the ukrainian president uh, has scrapped this treaty uh, it is it was due for uh, renewal but uh, he scrapped it because in 2014 the crimea region of ukraine was annexed by the russians why it was annexed we will get into that but uh, the story behind this uh, crimea region is that it is said to be the part of the russian federation but they gifted it to the ukraine so people here uh, they think they they are uh, mentally they are uh, inclined to uh, the russians they think that they are uh, unofficial nationals of the russian federation but they have they had actually here uh, ukrainian official passport so after 2014 when uh, russians came here or uh, try to annex it there was no certain revolt there because the public was in agreement so there was not such a protest here and russia didn't have to use military force to uh, a larger extent so it got into uh, the russian federation and uh, ukraine has had lost it back then that's why the friendship treaty was scrapped now why uh, why it is important this piece of land that uh, russians uh, annexed this is google earth and here we can see the uh, ukraine and this is russia in between this is the border in between them and this area this uh, small piece of land is called crimea this got annexed as i was suggest- uh, i was uh, showing you before and this uh, is important reason because it is the gateway of uh, black sea it is very important Uh, here if the western front western allies the nato could have built a naval base here they could have uh, almost encircled the russians here from here and they could have uh, had uh, russians on back foot that's why it was very strategically important for the russians to t- take this over same with this reason as well and uh, if uh, i can enra- in- enlarge it i can show this boundary from here to this whole region this region is called donbas you may have heard this in media reports and this donest donest is an official uh, capital of this whole region donbas and donbas is also under 
civil war between the Ukraine uh, military forces, U- Ukraine security forces and the uh, Russians backed militia. So here also the population is very much sympathetic to the Russians and they don't want Western influence in their country. That's why this whole region is under civil war. Now how Ukraine got into the Western influence, Western sphere, we'll see that. But I will show you this Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland. These all are NATO members and they are encircling the Russians because they have military bases all along this border. Poland may not see directly having a border with the Russians, but this region, you can see there is no country mentioned here. This is also Russian territory. So they have also a direct boundary line with the Russians. And they also got US uh, ballistic missile defense system or missile defense system along this border line, which is uh, like uh, the Russians S-400 missile system. So uh, this whole region got NATO military bases and they wanted Ukraine to have uh, to be under NATO command so that they can have a military base here as well as the US uh, military base naval base in this Black Sea. So it is it is very strategic strategically very important uh, geography region geographical region and they could have entered into the Black Sea through this passage uh, under uh, Turkish region from the Mediterranean region. So uh, it is said that if a war breaks, breaks out, when you have control over the uh, sea route, you can win the war easily because your supply line will not be disrupted. And uh, through the land, there are various challenges, but through the sea, you can uh, transport a very larger amount of uh, logistic very easily, very conveniently. So you can see even the Norway, is also a NATO member. I will show you here. This is NPR, a very credible website of uh, America, American uh, uh, media house. So you can see this infography. The colored one are all NATO members. So you can see important countries like UK, France, Germany, Spain, Portugal, Italy. All these are of NATO countries, even Turkey. As 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 I was saying, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, where all are all NATO members, even the Norway. So you can see the borderline is all covered with NATO members or uh, U.S. military forces. There, the U.S. has great military presence in Germany with 35,000 soldiers and in Italy with 12,000 soldiers because of these were the part of the Axis power uh, who were against allied forces under U.S. command during World War II. That's why the U.S. Had, US has a larger military base here. Now, NATO also got itself uh, bases all along this. You can see there are 44 troops of U.S. military personnel here in station in Ukraine. It is official number, but uh, unofficially there are larger number of uh, uh, military specialists in Ukraine. They are said to be advising the Ukraine military or training them as well to defend themselves from the Russian, so-called Russian invasion. Now, here in the whole world context, you can see there are several uh, hundreds of U.S. bases all along the world. The red ones are very important and the white ones or dotted ones are also important but not that important because these ma- these are the red ones are uh, major bases where they have significant number of forces or they also have uh, a nuclear armed armament there like in Japan uh, US Navy has uh, a seventh fleet which uh, also has a nuclear capable uh, or nuclear carrier uh, aircraft carrier then you have Australia Turkey also has nuclear base for US and uh, there are several uh, big bases all all around the Europe where U.S. has stationed several number of forces there. So you can see how main, how expanded the presence of U.S. military all along 
all around the world now you if you compare this with the russians russians have this uh, ba these bases and these bases are like legacy bases because they were part of the soviet union and they broke off but they had mutual understanding with the russians so the bases were uh, continued but uh, they uh, russians came up with new bases in uh, syria and one in Djibouti. so this one is Djibouti and this one is syria if we see from the whole world context then you will see that there aren't many russian bases all over the world only uh, along this central asian region who were part of the soviet union and the new one in middle east other than that you can see there is no other base in the whole world so uh, if you compare this Russians are pretty much surrounded by the U.S. bases, either in South Korea or Japan or either in Europe. So, uh, and if we compare that to the U.S., there is no such uh, predicament for the U.S. They are talking about having a base in Cuba or Venezuela, but that discussion is still in uh, discussion mode. So, nothing is substantial as of now. US, uh, USSR had a base in Cuba, but after the, it's, it got dissolved, there isn't any. Now, this whole situation, how it came to this point? Because Ukrainians had, uh, as I told, uh, told you earlier, that they had a very mutual understanding with the Russians. Now, this is color revolution. Color revolutions is a term given to various uh, revolutions which are named after some color in various parts of the world. You can see the whole uh, list of countries where these kind of colored revolution took place and the uh, Ukrainian one is called Orange Revolution. So such revolution originate from a, a small uh, organic local protests which can be against the high price rise or against the inflation or against the certain human rights or uh, some uh, corruptions or something like that it turns out the, into a big revolution because uh, some several factors get involved like the backing from foreign uh, countries who are against the regime or uh, they influence it with the money they influence it with armaments so it turns out into very serious kind of situation like civil war and it may result into government being thrown out or even the breaking of the country so yugoslavia is a prime example this country was there in europe now it doesn't exist anymore so this is the situation even in ukraine Ukraine had this color revolution. After that, there was certain change with the leadership and now they are almost pro-West rather than with the Russians. So now Ukraine leadership, leadership want to join the EU, European Union or the NATO or and NATO. So they became quite influenced by the Americans or by the European, Western Europeans because of the funding. Russia cannot fund that much because they are still a developing country. They are still going through the same, uh, the break of Soviet Union. They are, they haven't fully recovered from that. That's why the West or the Americans can pull out several, uh, pull into so much money that they can influence the whole region. That's why, that's how uh, they became influenced. And uh, the West, why they have this, uh, need of it because they have this mentality of cold war era where they see uh, they saw the russians or soviets as the boogeyman and that uh, there was certain kind of element of uh, fact that uh, both soviet or the us wanted the whole world to be on their side and they had several conflict going on they didn't involve themselves directly but they had proxy wars like in vietnam or in even in uh, South Korea, sorry, Korean Peninsula, and then there was in uh, Afghanistan the Soviet war. So these kind of proxies happened, and uh, and the U.S. came on top because USSR got di dissolved. After that, the mentality still didn't change because there is the factor of establishment with the 
military industrial complex establishment are the security agencies the the institutions or the politicians who are uh, uh, involved with the bureaucrats or the industrial complex of uh, uh, the arm um, Uh, manufacturing companies, corporations like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, uh, Raytheon's, and uh, BAE system like that. These industry, these corporation need market for to sell their weapons, and to do so, they need a constant uh, war machine going on. So there has to be have uh, some conflicts going on around the world so that they can sell their weapons uh, to the clients. and ukraine is getting lots of weapons from the west uh, especially from americans as well as several other countries are building up their own military like poland is said to having the world uh, europe largest military uh, army there standing army there and also uh, japan is building its own army they are trying to get uh, f35 they got some and they are getting some more uh, same with the koreans same with the british or uh, other european countries uh, and other places of the world so you can see this is whole military industrial complex scenario they get involved with the politicians they try to uh, lobby for their favorable policies to be implemented by the government then and also there are fi- financial aspect involved so in financial aspect the insider trading if you have heard the term then the insiders of uh, the stock market they know which uh, the which stock will rise up which stock will fall because they had this information that government is going to invade some country or try to manipulate the country into civil war and that's why there will be disruption like in petrol uh, supply line and the prices of uh, the petroleum will spike and that's why the companies of uh, who are operating these petroleum supply chain or producing petrol their stock will rise and they will make money so this is whole uh, cartel like thing they are pushing the world into chaos and they are making money they are making profit out of it they also have the media on their side those uh, the media will, you will get this kind of news like putin is about to invade the ukraine putin is about to invade nato members latvia estonia lithuania putin is about uh, put, has put a gang of assassin in ireland to kill people in england so these kind of news are being pushed through the media there was uh, same news when uh, uh, iraq was to be invaded there was the this news that uh, saddam hussein possesses weapons of mass destruction and uh, he is very um, dangerous for the whole region of middle west so that's why the americans the allies uh, they forced uh, invasion and they removed saddam hussein but turns out that there was no such weapon there was this whole narrative was built just to invade the iraq so there was several criticism of america or uh, britain who pushed for this war again i will quote this uh, army naval chief uh, sorry G- germany navy chief who has retired now and uh, uh, he said something while he was in india that didn't go well with the military industrial complex or the establishment of west he said that does russia really wants a tiny stripe of ukrainian soil or integrate integrate in the country no this is nonsense putin is probably pushing uh, putting pressure because he knows he can do it and it splits the eu but what he really wants is high level respect so germany germans navy chief of that time thinks that uh, they uh, the putin uh, russians or the putin just want respect he doesn't want the conflict he doesn't he isn't aggressive as people think he did uh, annex crimea because it was strategically important and that time he could have annexed uh, half of ukraine because uh, ukraine wasn't uh, fully protected back then by the uh, nato as it is now or being protected or intentions being shown to be protected so germany or german navy chief at that time just said that he wanted russia to be ally with india russia and germany they could contain china so they wanted he wanted 
have to have Russia as an ally against the Chinese. But for this, he had to resign and also issue apology because it didn't go, it didn't toe the line that was drawn for him uh, by the military industrial complex. He was speaking out of line, out of context, out of uh, whole narrative that is being built against the Putin. Now, India's role here, what is India's stand here? I will we'll talk about it. Both America and uh, India, uh, uh, Russia want India on their side because India is a very big country. It has very large uh, population, uh, very powerful military and uh, is also very economic, economically stable and uh, can rival China at some point in time. So it can stand up against the Chinese as we have seen with Galwan Valley. So America and Russia both are, both can benefit from the India, from India. America also sees India as a big market for weapon and other stuff. Uh, we have big co cooperation regarding the IT sector and uh, uh, India, uh, India also sees America as a big market. Also EU is a big market for Indian products. So we can garner so much export to this country that uh, we can't afford to be hostile against the West. Same for same goes for Ukraine, uh, sorry, Russians, because Russia is our very uh, strategically very important partner for a long time. And uh, they, we are cooperating in not only in military, but also in space technology, because you can see that uh, uh, the Gaganian mission, the candidate, the pot potential candidates are being trained in Russia. So we have that kind of cooperation as well as we are getting S-400 from the Russia. So both are not going to, not uh, willing to uh, uh, offend India or uh, sideline India. They want India on their side, but we are taking our own uh, uh, stand. We are looking after our own interest and we are not getting into any camp, but we are having friendly relationship with both of them. So that's the stand of Indian government. And I think it is a very uh, good stance, very, uh, I mean, it is for the interest of this country that we are not getting into any block here. So these are the things, these are the factors that is going on and this is not simply the regional issue or local issue between Ukraine and Russia. It is uh, uh, every other country with the NATO or the former uh, ally and uh, uh, the uh, polar opposite of Soviet Union era or the Cold War era between US and Soviet Union. They are, they are still engaged in the same rhetoric. And I don't think there will be a war, but the conflict seems to be genuine here, may turn into ugly, but there will not be a very large uh, implications because the Ukraine is still not the part of NATO and uh, many of the NATO leadership have, has to, uh, have said that uh, they will not going to defend Ukraine as a member because uh, Ukraine has occupied, uh, occupied territories uh, by the Russians, uh, especially Crimea, and there is a civil war going on in the eastern front of Ukraine. So uh, now Chinese are there, Russia is trying to get Chinese on their side as well that can multiply their forces as well. So I think there are various uh, combination going on at this level because America is not a superpower of uh, that influence anymore. Uh, various countries are looking after their own interest and they are not uh, choosing to be uh, in, in a block like the France uh, or even uh, you can see the German uh, Navy chief, former Navy chief. Germany has a Nord Stream that that is a pipeline for gas that is coming from the Russia to Germany. So they are still having that um, operational and they are getting another pipeline Nord, Nord Stream 2 from the Russians. And even objections from America, Germany hasn't uh, seized that operation, uh, didn't get, uh, I mean, they are not closing that supply line. So this is the whole situation here. What do you think about this? And uh, uh, genuinely 
it is not being shown on the media because there are certain kind of bias among the media where uh, certain countries take one stand and, and other country take the other stand there is no middle ground there is no critical thinking in the media and or uh, they are getting money influence or their own bias some are uh, looking after the russians because they have ideological compatibility with the russians and some are looking after west because they think that uh, western countries have uh, a greater grasp or understanding of democracy human rights and other stuff so this is the whole scenario here what do you think about it please comment in my comment section you can suggest me and you can also uh, suggest topics that i should be discussing as of now thanks for watching the whole video and i will come up with another important issue till then i will take the leave and namaste jai hind